Greetings to you all. My name is Mugani Moyo, a food chemist at SIP based in Nairobi, Kenya. I will present on a study which was conducted in Ghana and Uganda on consumer preference testing of boiled sweet potato using the tricot approach. This work was published in Frontiers in Sustainable Food Systems in February 2021. TRICOT is an acronym which stands for Triadic Comparison of Technologies. It is an approach that has been successfully used in participatory varietal selection in different regions. It employs a crowdsourcing approach where farmers become citizen scientists, assisting researchers in data generation and collection. The approach enables large tasks to be split into small manageable tasks the planting material is randomized into incomplete blocks of three varieties and distributed to many participants over large regions. We adopted the tricot approach for a consumer preference study, also using the randomized incomplete block design. Each consumer analyzed three varieties. We also tested the concepts of consumers testing the samples in the comfort of their homes home testing versus testing in a centralized location. These pictures were taken in Uganda and they show the home testing approach that we used. Through coordination with community leaders, participants were gathered at centralized locations, briefed on the study and taken through the questionnaires. Each household was then given a package containing three coded varieties wrapped separately and asked to prepare them in their homes, consume and rank. All members of the household above 18 years of age were eligible to fill in the questionnaires. The research team visited the households the following morning to collect the completed questionnaires. For community testing in Uganda, participants met at a central venue Local community members prepared the varieties in different coded pots and each participant received three random samples from the lot for testing. We had local translators to assist those who could not read or write. All questionnaires were checked on submission to ensure that participants answered all the questions. This slide shows the number of participants in each country. In Uganda, we worked with six varieties in three regions. In Ghana, we worked with 21 genotypes in four regions. We had more participants in Ghana compared to Uganda to match the high number of genotypes tested. All data was analyzed in R and also using the Klimo platform. We collaborated with Jacob van Etten and his team at Bioversity International for data analysis. From the genotypes tested in the two countries, we managed to identify the most preferred based on the overall favorability scores, where a high positive score in blue is the most preferred and negative scores in the pinkish color are the least preferred. For this analysis, results from home and centralized testing were combined. We also analyzed the home and centralized testing data separately for each country, where A represents home testing and B represents centralized testing. And we can see that for both countries, the overall highest ranking genotypes based on the previous slide were also the highest ranking when the data was split. The research tools also allowed the participants to describe each sample in their own terms. And we then conducted a sentiment analysis to identify the most common descriptors. The majority of the sentiments used to describe the genotypes were associated with taste attributes. These results were confirmed using the Kendall rank correlation coefficient. The geographic and gender segmentation were also included in the analysis as variables 
and they did not have any effect on the consumer preferences reported. The same also goes for the flesh color of the roads. In conclusion, using the tricot approach, we managed to identify the most preferred varieties in each target community for both countries. To our knowledge, this is the first report where tricot is used in a consumer preference study. Our results show that the tool is highly versatile and should be considered for future consumer studies to complement participatory variety selection by farmers. In this way, varieties that meet farmer expectations for superior agronomic characteristics and consumer expectations for favorable sensory attributes can be identified for release in different regions. Such consolidated efforts have the potential to improve dissemination and adoption rates of newly improved varieties. We would like to acknowledge the CG research program on roots, tubers, and bananas for funding this work. Thank you. So thank you very much, Mukani uh, and the SIP teams for um, consolidating this presentation. As I mentioned in the, in the beginning, in the introduction, this was prepared as part of the RTB Foods virtual annual meeting uh, that took place uh, last month. So the format is a bit shorter than, uh, than usually uh, expected in, in our webinars. Um, but um, but we thought that it was it, it deserved to be to be shown. The approach itself is used within different projects, different partner projects um, on RTB crops and on RTB in the RTB breeding programs. Um, so we we thought that it deserved to be to be shown in during a webinar. Um, so we we don't have Mukani. Mukani was not available uh, to interact with you today, but we have uh, Ruben Sally, who is a, a sweet potato breeder at SIP uh, Uganda. And uh, uh, Ruben, he's here to answer your questions at the approach and on in particular on the results and then the potential for application on other crops. Ruben, are you are you with us? Can you? introduce yourself briefly and um, we will then take the questions from the audience. Thank you very much, uh, Eglinton, and thank you all that I've turned up for the webinar. My name is Ruben Sully, uh, sweet potato breeder with uh, International Potato Center. Um, I was previously based in uh, Ghana, but I'm right now based in Uganda. So I have a feel of uh, the, the two countries where the trials were, the, what was run. Um, thank you. Thank you, uh, Ruben. Uh, there's a question in the chat from Jan Lowe. Um, so the results show that mostly taste characteristics were captured during this method. For the home assessments, where they asked to assess cooking times, was that what that considered to be an important trait, cooking time? Okay, uh, thank you, Jan, for the, the, the question. Um, the the tricot uh, method, um, we didn't necessarily ask the farmers or the consumers to um, consider cooking time. We just asked them to cook them according to their normal practice. Uh, the tricot method is, uh, is tailored towards uh, um, uh, riding on that variability um, across um, if, if, if the variety was cooked and you cooked it much shorter, uh, you cooked it your usual time, but which is much shorter than what is required by the variety, uh, your results would be able to tell us uh, that you didn't like it. And uh, that, 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 was, that way, um, the variability would be captured. So we did not standardize the most especially the home testing, we did not standardize the cooking time. Although uh, when we were testing them in the community, all the, uh, the varieties were cooked at the same time. Uh, but also our, 
ongoing research is showing that um, variability cooking time is, uh, is a very important factor uh, concerning, uh, is a very good, is a very uh, important factor concerning most especially the firmness uh, of the variety. Thank you, Ruben. Um, I hope it's, uh, it's okay for you, Jan. Uh, if you wish to ask something more, please feel free to direct ask another question to, to Ruben. Um, there's a question from uh, Gérard. Uh, Gérard is asking, what is the number of clones that can be evaluated using this tricot method? Um, the the tricot method partly part of this study was to try and uh, try to uh, get those optimum numbers, uh, but uh, right now we have developed uh, an interactive tool uh, where you can be able to input the number of varieties you want to test, uh, so that it can be able to help you estimate the number of farmers you want. It can also help you estimate, uh, in case you're going to plant, uh, the number of uh, planting materials per variety you might need. So uh, this uh, part of this study was to try and come out with some of those parameters. And uh, right now, when you go to the Climo platform, uh, you can be able to find all these parameters. So you can tailor your study according to maybe the resources you have of the number of, 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 of farmers you want to reach or you can also tailor it according to the number of varieties. Uh, for instance, uh, for 12 uh, varieties, when you use the interactive tool, you realize you might need, um, um, the, the variety, each variety might need to appear on 63 farms, and in the end, you will have to be having around 348 farmers. But at the same time, if you change the varieties, and now you say that I want to go with 21 varieties, then, uh, um, you you the, the the parameters change so you change the number of of farms that of farmers the number of planting materials you need all those so it is now interactive you can be able to evaluate any number you want depending on either the resources or the plant whatever limiting factor you have at your uh, for your study uh, gerard as you know is a work package five leader um, with uh, Alexandre Bougnol and uh, Bella Tiken as co-leaders, so I think there's a lot, uh, a lot of a um, lot of knowledge and a lot of uh, tools and methods to 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 learn from this tricot approach. Gerard, do you want to ask something more or to to bring precision? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Eglantin, thank you very much. Uh, you've just introduced it, and I think tricot is one of the method that we are. Uh, introducing in the guidelines that we are in the process of elaborating. So that's why I wanted to know more about it. And uh, thank God we have Bela among us, Bela who has uh, a very good knowledge also on the tree court. So thank you very much. Okay. There's a, thank you, Gerard. Uh, there's another question from Jan Lowe. Um, Jan is asking, in the future, would you go with a centralized assessment since presumably it's faster and there was no difference in the ranking of top clones? Yeah, from the study, from the results of the study, uh, the centralized testing would be uh, most ideal. But if you want to cover, to capture the suitability of your clones, across different preparation, uh, rather um, cooking methods, then the home testing might be uh, needed. For this particular set of materials, uh, we, it is possible there was no such variation, but uh, um, uh, it's something we can anticipate in the future. It could be uh, a factor given the kind of, uh, the, what the, our work in work package two on sweet potato uh, is clearly showing that uh, the optimum cooking time for different varieties uh, keeps changing. So there's variability amongst uh, the germplasm. So uh, if you uh, went with only, uh, if you went with the centralized testing alone, uh, we we'll miss to capture the suitability of a variety when a particular farmer prepares their sweet potato differently. Uh, 
uh, and it's affecting them. So uh, I would go for it uh, if I have large numbers, but uh, if I have uh, small numbers, uh, the home testing would also be suitable to capture that variability. Regarding the preparation, there's a question from Akim. Were the clones eaten with sauce or without sauce? Uh, the, for centralized testing, uh, they were eaten without sauce uh, for the testing, but uh, for home testing, uh, we don't know. We left that open. Okay. Um, a question from Didier regarding the number of participants needed to perform tricot uh, methods. I think it's a, a minimum number or an optimal number. Didier, do you want to ask your question directly to Ruben? Yes, yeah, it's concerning the minimum number of participants need to perform tricot. Um, okay, um, there is no um, minimum number per se. Uh, you might need to, um, it depends on how many uh, varieties you, you, you have, you want to share. Uh, let me just try to see if I can share the, uh, I can share my screen for, and I show you how the, okay. And I show you how, if it's possible to, for us to use the interactive tool um, together, so that you get, you get a feel of, is my screen up? Yes. Yes, uh, this is how the interactive tool works. I can change uh, the number of uh, uh, packages, uh, first of all, you start with the effective size to detect uh, variation, uh, and then uh, the number of technologies you want. Now for this study, uh, Uganda had five varieties. So if you put five varieties, and then uh, uh, you see that uh, the number of packages uh, in, that you're going to distribute out uh, changes, and also the number of participants, this would be the number of farmers changes. But now, like, uh, if we use the values for Ghana, uh, and we say um, Ghana had 21 packages for this particular study, so um, the, 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 you realize that now we have, we will require uh, at least 340 participants. So this, uh, it's interactive, it's variable, uh, but it's all tailored towards uh, being able to, uh, to reach the effective size for you, so uh, it will depend on the numbers that you're going to test of, of the variety you're going to test. So this one is available on the Climob uh, platform. Uh, and uh, with that, you can be able to design your study very well. I hope that clarifies uh, the issue of size or number of farm. Thank you very much. It's uh, an interesting tool. So uh, the tool is publicly available, right? Yes, it's publicly available on the Climate platform, and all you need to do is um, sign up and, 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 and use it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Ruben, can you please copy and paste the, the, link, the link in, in the chat okay. box? Yes, please. Okay, okay, sure. Let me just do that right away. Okay. I think that's, that's of use for work package five, RTB foods. Okay. Oh. Oh. I don't know, I need to stop sharing. Uh, okay, right here, got it. And then I'll... Thank you. Um, very interesting indeed. Um, there's a question from Enoch. Um, if categorical or ordinary scale was used to assess cooked product characteristics, what st what's statistical method to calculate the mean value for ranking the genotypes? So it's a uh, statistic on statistics. Okay, what, what happens is that- uh, Thank you, this is Asrat. Okay. Yes, if you are used for the response uh, for the, the product, like uh, if you go for tests, sweet, bitter, or um, somewhere, 
So how you how you, you know the reporting at the end we are going to be at a mean value for different um, respondents. So this categorical or ordinary scale. So how you do mean? Do you think a mean making a mean of like bitter and sweet is appropriate statistical to report? Or uh, I have some some issue of the statistical methodology it was used to rank the genotypes. Okay, um, the 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 geno the method for the scores is simply asking the the farmers or the consumers who are, which is completely untrained panel. They're just going to tell you, I like this, I don't like that. Remember, you have three varieties. By by someone telling you, uh, this is my best and this is my worst, they have already ranked the entire set of three varieties. So you're using the ranks. Uh, to be able to uh, measure the favorability. That means the likelihood of uh, a variety coming out on top or being a winner or being a loser. So it's, uh, it's, uh, the mean wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be a good representative of a, of a rank because uh, you'd, have, you'd eventually be out of the three. Uh, it means almost everything would have will be scoring uh, if, if you got a mean, everything would be uh, scoring the same. But here, with the ranking, uh, if a variety goes head to head on this farmers, uh, on the, with this consumer who evaluated it, it was a winner. But then in another consumer, it was the worst or the, the loser. Then uh, the, 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 the statistics is such a way that you, you measure the worth based on the probability for that variety becoming uh, the best or the probability for that variety becoming the worst. So that is uh, how the statistics here work for the, the, for the tricot assessment. Is it, uh, is it okay for you, Ashrat? Yeah, yeah, I think if you do, so the probability was made was used. I think it's it's okay. I'm fine. Okay. Um, so Ruben has just shared the link uh, to the tool he showed. He shared on his screen, and there was a, a remark from Yanlo asking to access um, how this tool was built. So the statistics behind and the hypothesis behind. And Bella shared an, the the article. Um, the, the Stenke, Stenke et al. article. Oh, yeah, Oops, sorry. Uh, Miriam, your, your mic was open, so I just uh, mute your mic. Yes, Ruben, you want to, to bring some more information on this uh, paper? Well, what the paper highlights is uh, um, the effective size of uh, it, it works with the uh, the effective size of the, uh, in order for you to be able to effectively uh, use probabilities or the ranks to uh, separate the, um, the technologies. That's what the, the, the paper is all about. And uh, like enough, it is, uh, it used a sensory, so um, it, it, is, it is very helpful. Bella, do you want to bring some more information uh, your, from your perspective? Because you've been using tricot method on cassava clones in Nigeria. Yes, of course I can do that. Thank you. Um, we have indeed been using uh, um, tricot for field trials. And um, we, you can, there's no fixed, also there's no real fixed uh, ratio between the number of technologies and the participants. It's, it depends also on what you want to get out of it. For example, if you have 30 varieties as are in our case, uh, and, and you want to know which 50% of those varieties is better than the other 50%, then you can, can go with lesser numbers. Then you can have 30 varieties and maybe uh, 300 or 300 farmers. But if you want to know something more, uh, Specifically, and have more detail in the in the in the, in the, in the data set, 
And, and if you also want to have more sub detail in the subsets, if there are different agro ecologies in, in, in involved, which is not, or in the case of consumer testing, that will be different, uh, different uh, uh, cooking methods or different ways of preparation, then you have to go up with your numbers or you have to go down with your varieties. So if, if I have 30 varieties and I really want to have detailed information, you will probably have to go to 800 to 1,000 uh, participants. So it depends how, how granulated you want to have, the, the, how, how detailed you want to, to the information do you get out of it. Thank you, Bella. <laughs> Thanks a lot. So there's a still a, a lot to consider within RTB foods and probably to be, to be also adapted by product, by crop, or let's say even by product profile, um, depending on a, whether it's a boiled product or a dough product, depending on the processing also, the number of steps in the processing and so yeah. on. So there's a, a lot to think about. But the advantage, over, the advantage over the normal, the normal consumer testing in which you can uh, test from four, depending on how, how long your questionnaire is, of course. But if you have a simple questionnaire, you can you can evaluate up to seven samples uh, with consumers, and and not more because that will just overload too much the the the, the <laughs> consumer. So the, the 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 advantage here is really that you can go for twelve clones or fifteen clones, and then have like 400, uh, 400 consumer testing test, and then still be able to rank all those clones. Well, if you want to do the traditional methods, you have to do two rounds and then with, with some overlap of checks or something like that. But this is more straightforward. And it's also really comparing what is, you have to, each, each consumer has three varieties only, to, to three samples. Uh, to test and they will always say the best and the worst and then of course the, the one that is in the middle is in the middle so it's really comparative you, you compare two things very concretely in, in, instead of trying to rate it from on a scale from one to nine uh, which is done usually in uh, mm -hmm. traditional consumer testing food science consumer testing very good but it would, very, it would be very interesting to have an experiment that which you do you do exactly you do both and and then compare the results and, and that that should be an interesting one. True. Well, regarding the, the the checks, there's a question from Thierry in the chat box. The at home testing is by nature under uncontrolled conditions. So which approaches were used to verify, so to check the robustness of the results? Have you used a controlled genotype given several times to each household? How do you, ass how, how you assess the repeatability regarding at, ho uh, home, at home tasting? That's a question for Ruben. Yeah, um, the, the, the very nature of the, of the, of the tricot, the way the trial is designed is uh, not only the check, but almost all the test varieties are being repeated because uh, these uh, combinations uh, of, of, of technology options keep repeating. So uh, you can find like um, uh, almost a variety was in a package, let's say like 20 uh, uh, across 20 farms or 20 by was tested by 20 consumers. But each of those consumers is having separate uh, packages around. So by repeating the, uh, you remember we did, uh, we showed results of the joint analysis and then also uh, uh, home analysis separate and then also uh, the, and the ranking didn't change. So uh, that shows uh, some kind of, repeat, uh, of repeatability and robustness of, the, of our results. Good. Is there any other question for Ruben or the SIP teams in Ghana and Uganda? 
Any other remark or suggestion, proposition? Another question from Jan. What is the cost of tricot compared to the traditional approach like mother baby trials? Um, that is uh, something we are still investigating. Uh, we have just collected like the first round of data from uh, the team in Ghana with the team in Ghana, and uh, we can share. We can uh, we can share after we repeat the, the experiment, the cost. Uh, but this was a uh, real, not not necessarily. Uh, this this particular study was uh, for sensory, uh, but uh, we have contacted now a study where we are. Uh, farmers are planting, are growing, and then also ranking the varieties. So that will give us a better try, a, a better, uh, better results for that. So far, right now, um, we don't have uh, an, a, a fair comparison of the prices. Although we suspect we have more data points from the tricot uh, uh, method approach, which means. Uh, uh, we're likely to be, if you to measure by uh, cost of, of data points, uh, it's likely Trico to give us more, but uh, we can't just assume that. So we will be sharing the results in the near future. Thank you. Um, another question from Hakim. Um, does the temperature during evaluation affect the choice of consumer preferences? Since it's not, it looked like it, it was not standardized. Because the temperature mm. of the of the I think of the sample itself once tested. Um, we can't we can't tell, um, but uh, we can't tell either for home testing, but maybe for standardization, you let. Um, you try to, to 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 make sure that you serve at more or less the same uh, the same the same temperature, but uh, we we just can't tell that yet. It would mean a, a more designed a study to to investigate that. Thank you. Um, something more. Anybody wants to say something? Bring some. Inputs, perspective, experience on clone assessment. Well, it's more than time. So thanks, uh, uh, thanks a lot, Ruben. Thanks uh, to the team, uh, to the SIP teams in uh, Ghana and Uganda. Thanks to Mukani for preparing this presentation. Um, so very good. Um, thanks, Ruben. Do you want to say something? Before we conclude, yeah, um, uh, thank you. It's uh, it's uh, the tricot uh, approach has been a learning journey for us. We we are um, impressed with the way uh, the results keep coming up, and how we're being able to fix um, and answer some of the puzzles that we had from the start. So uh, I'm grateful that uh, we've been able to share this with others. Good, perfect. Thank you, Ruben. I think also that um, the, the IATA team in Nigeria is, uh, has also uh, captured uh, uh, different uh, years um, of results. So I think they, they should, uh, we should have a presentation in the next months, probably um, prepared by the IATA team um, and probably presented by Bella on the tricot results. So we hope to see, to, to have more inputs from their side as well, um, and to consolidate the, the work package five RTB foods methodology. Thanks a lot. So there's a lot still to be investigated as part of the work package five. You've mentioned the costs, but um, the time as well, uh, which is more or less related to the costs um, mm. and a lot to be designed uh, as well to, to improve and maybe adaptation to the products, to the different RTB That's products. Cool. Thank you, Ruben. Thanks, everybody, for joining today's webinar. Um, we meet in two weeks, and in two weeks, we'll have a presentation on texture, textural characterization. 
and there should be a, a comparison between two different tests, extrusion tests and TPA. Um, this will be presented by the USA FSA ben Benin. So Noel Akisue will be making this presentation or probably somebody from... from um, so it will be focused on textual characterization, probably on boil cassava, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it will be a methodological presentation, methodological webinar, let's say. Um, so thanks again for joining and uh, enjoy the end of the week, enjoy your weekend, and we see each other in two weeks' time. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.